The reason why people have reduced their lives to very small scope is simply because they're afraid of failure. I know I will die a failure, but I'm a blissful failure, so it doesn't matter. So if you are going to freak every time, when something doesn't happen the way you want it, then you will freak for the rest of your life. So if you see this, you would understand that the source of all human experience is within you. But rest of the things are manufactured within you, this is your cause. Fundamentally you have to see, my physical health, my mental health is my responsibility, one hundred percent. If you see this, then methods are available to come out. One thing is very clear, even if you go to the doctor, they're only giving you a pill, isn't it? What is a pill or a tablet? Just a certain amount of chemicals. If you put these chemicals, it lifts you out of your depression, it makes your anxiety go a little bit. It may not permanently go, at least for those few hours, it's down. According to the World Health Organization, depression is a major health issue affecting approximately 280 million people worldwide. According to a study, exercise and physical work can help prevent depression. It is a mental illness that is entirely self-inflicted, says Satguru. Here, Satguru explains the main reasons why a person experiences depression and the basic things that can be done to avoid it. Take a look. I'm happy that the awareness has become more, but again at the same time, I'm also realizing there are a few people who suddenly might be feeling a little low one particular day and they want to believe that it is depression. I, I know the depression is a very genuine, serious problem, but because of this overexposure, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Is it really pushing the next generation into a, you know, thinking one, any small hiccup also thinking that this might be something serious problem and they giving into it? Oh, I didn't know that was a popular question <laughs> With your question, you are getting into trouble. If I answer this, I will get into deeper trouble <laughs> I've already last one year, I've been in lot of trouble because a whole lot of people are pursuing me and saying, he doesn't respect depression, he's talking against it, he thinks it is not a medical no, issue. No, I respect it. By the way, I don't want to be in trouble, but I, gen <laughs> I genuinely believe it and… but I just don't know, it's… with… with few… It, it's just becoming too much, they're talking so much about it that Sometimes, sometimes people who are generally low on particular day also might feel… No, don't be… Ninety percent of the cases are maybe fair, but sometimes… Yeah. <laughs> he really <laughs> plays it safe <laughs> <laughs> The reason why people have reduced their lives to very small scope is simply because they're afraid of failure. I know I will die a failure. But I'm a blissful failure, so it doesn't matter. Now, why I'm saying this to you is, well, there are certain pathological issues within the system. There are genetic issues, there are these chemistry issues. But for all this, fundamentally, the basic control for all this is within you. You have not taken charge of it, that is a clear factor. You are trying to manage an inner situation by arranging an outer situation. But whoever the hell you are, you can never arrange the outer situation just the way you want it. Does it ever happen? Does it ever happen to anybody? Nobody happens hundred percent your way, isn't it? Not your husband, not your wife, not your parents, not your children, not your friends, not your office, nobody happens one hundred percent the way you want it. So if you are going to freak every time, when something doesn't happen the way you want it, then you will freak for the rest of your life. So if you see this, you would understand that the source of all human experience is within you, including how your chemistry will slosh is within you.
when somebody is ill, are we going to talk all this to them? No. They need care, they need help, they need medicine, they need compassion, that's a different matter. But those of you who are healthy, if you think, because right from childhood this comes, if you are sick, you get attention, if you are joyful, you will get scolding. This must change in the society. Joy should get attention. Misery should not get attention. This is a very misunderstood way of handling things. If a child is jumping with joy and screaming, Hey, why are you screaming? If you be, 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 like this means, mo, 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 mo. It's just a wrong way of raising a child. Because a child must understand, he must invest in being well. He must not invest in being unwell. Unwell will not bring any results or rewards to him. He must understand this in a very deep way. If he thinks being unwell, physically or mentally, I will get lot of attention and rewards, he will work towards being unwell. This may look very simplistic, but I am telling you this from a very profound dimension of who we are. If you don't take charge of this, then you are thinking it is all happening to you. So a lot of people for ages, especially in the last hundred years, because of psychiatry developing in a certain way, people started saying, no, there is genetic things, you can't touch it. Well, now genetic sciences are telling you in twenty-four hours, you can change your genetic course completely if you do the right things with yourself. You can change the genetic patterns of who you are in a matter of twenty-four hours. I can show this to you. People who go through certain types of initiations and processes, twenty-four hours later you look at them, their very face will look different. You cannot recognize them, they will become like that because you can transcend your genetic limitation. In fact, this entire culture is about that. Spiritual process means that. See, when you are eighteen years of age, you don't want to be like your parents, I want to be something different, this, that. But you see the same person, by the time you're forty, forty-five, you begin to walk like your mother, talk like her, sit like her, stand like her. Have you noticed this happening to you? Because the genetics are taking over. We call this traditionally as karma. Karma means past memory is ruling the present. If memory rules the present, if your memory structures who you are, you have no life of your own, you're just an extension, you're a recycle, you're not a fresh life. Spiritual process means just this, that you want to break away from the limits of your memory because memory means there is evolutionary memory, there is atomic memory, there is elemental memory, there is genetic memory, conscious, unconscious, articulate, inarticulate, there are many kinds of memories. You want to transcend this so that you become a fresh life, your experience of life is completely fresh. Otherwise, you are just a recycle of the past. Why same problems e exist after hundred generations is simply because nobody breaks the memory cycle. If you touch something beyond your physical nature, then we are saying this is spiritual. You went to temple, church, mosque, wherever, this is not spiritual. There you are going, what is the prayer about? What is the prayer about? Dear God, give me this, give me that, save me, protect me. Hello? This is just survival, outsourced <laughs> So if you want to break the cycle, then you have to touch a dimension which is not physical in nature. Once you touch something that is not physical in nature, there is no cyclical moment because you have become free from all the memory bank that you have. So whether you have chemical issues within you, whether you have pathological issues, genetic issues, you can break away from that. Maybe certain people will need more striving, certain people will come out more easily, that is always there. But for everybody there is a way. So when I say all your ailments, if they are infections, they are different. They come from outside, it's an invasion, you have to deal with it. But rest of the things are manufactured within you, 
this is your cause. Fundamentally you have to see my physical health, my mental health is my responsibility, one hundred percent. If you see this, then methods are available to come out. We have all the compassion because I want you to understand, if you have a physical ailment, you will get compassion from everybody. If you have a mental ailment, you will get ridicule from everybody. So particularly people who are suffering any kind of mental ailments, depression, anxiety, whatever, they need double the compassion that physical ailments need. But normally in societies, they get ridicule because it is very difficult. It's very difficult to decide whether this person is really sick or making it up or they're acting it up to get something out of me or what it is you can't make out. One time it looks real, another time it looks like it's made up. So unfortunately, both for the one who is suffering and those who live around them, it is a constant struggle. But the most fundamental thing is, whoever you are, whatever condition you are, first and foremost thing to understand is, physical and mental health is my responsibility. You think for everything there's a solution outside. Yes, when we need help, we will take help. When it, things have gone out of control, we seek help from outside. But fundamental thing is to take responsibility. Today, genetic sciences, neurosciences and also psychiatrists are beginning to speak that whatever the condition, it is possible to alter this from within. Only thing is how. There are many ways for how. Yoga is a technology. Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body as most people are doing. It is a technology of taking charge of this. One thing is very clear, even if you go to the doctor, they're only giving you a pill, isn't it? What is a pill or a tablet? Just a certain amount of chemicals. If you put these chemicals, it lifts you out of your depression, it makes your anxiety go a little bit. It may not permanently go, at least for those few hours, it's down. So essentially, human experience has a chemical basis. Your joy is a certain kind of chemistry, your misery is a certain kind of chemistry, anxiety is one kind of chemistry, tranquility is another kind of chemistry, ecstasy is one kind of chemistry, agony is another kind of chemistry. All human experience has a chemical basis to it. This is the greatest chemical factory on the planet, most complex and sophisticated chemical factory on the planet. The question is only, are you a great CEO or a lousy CEO? That's all the question is. That may sound brutal when you're sick. When you're sick, there is compassion. But when you're well, you must take responsibility for this. Otherwise, you will make yourself sick. Everybody has an excuse as to why I should not get up from my bed and cry in my bed. Everybody has some reason, isn't it? Hello? Yes or no? Everybody has some pain somewhere about something. Somebody died, somebody did not, if somebody is born, somebody is not born, all kinds of things. There is no human being who doesn't have a reason to push themselves into some kind of mental dip. Everybody has or not, there is a reason. Some people get there, some people don't get there. Is it always intentional? No. But there is an inner intent, that intent may not be a conscious intent, there is a chemical intent, there is genetic intent. Your uh, Atte was depressed, now you don't know why, you are fine and suddenly you're depressed because there is a genetic intent. But this intent can be altered if you take charge of yourself. <clears throat> Eventually, it all ends up in our hands. There are many simple things we fail to notice in our daily lives, such as the cause of our depression. The solution is not to be found outside of us, in taking medications for example, but rather inside. We must, Satguru says, take charge of ourselves. To watch more from Satguru, click on the link shown on the screen right now. Support us by sharing your thoughts and feedback in the comments section. 
Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video, and thank you for watching.